there. Welcome back to the Chaps Guide. My name is Ash and I am your host on this journey through men's style, self-development and personal grooming. Now today I'm going to give you my picks for the four ties that you absolutely have to have in your tie collection. However, it's worth thinking about the good old tie and the place it plays in men's couture at the present time. So now we're in the sort of 90, sorry, the 2020s. Time is passing and the way that we dress, our style is constantly evolving. And it appears at the moment that the good old tie is at an all time low. It's in a total slump in the way that people dress. Um, rarely do you see people wearing a tie these days. And in fact, many of the big corporate entities, which used to be the bastions for, you know, uh, stylistic dressing for men, you could guarantee you would find a man in a suit and a tie in these big businesses. Well, today they've done away with most of their dress codes. And, you know, it's very difficult for a person to think of a good excuse, a good reason to wear a tie. The juxtaposition to that is I would say that the tie remains one of the last items in your wardrobe which will allow you to inject a little bit of colour and a little bit of your personality into the outfit that you're wearing. Be it quite avant-garde, be it quite conservative, but it's your opportunity to enter something into your lexicon of clothing which will set you apart from the open collared masses who now inhabit the, in, inhabit the world of men's style wherever you are, whether you're in an office, whether you're in a uh, sort of smarter social event, maybe going to a christening or a wedding. Nowadays, everybody's wearing an open collar. So the tie, for me, is having a renaissance as your opportunity to express yourself in colour, in pattern and in style. What you need to do is to curate a small but highly capable collection of ties which you will be able to draw out of your wardrobe and utilise in service in the vast majority of events that you're likely to encounter in life. So today I'm going to give you my four picks for the ties that you must have in your collection. Now before I give you my suggestions of the four tie types that you have to own, I'm going to tell you the ones that I think you absolutely need to avoid, which will damage your style credentials if you wear them. Now you've heard these before, but I'm just going to remind you because it's so important. Father's Day, Christmas Day, your birthday, that favourite niece or auntie or cousin or brother they're going to give you a novelty tie. It might have a Superman emblem on it. It might have Homer Simpson emblazed across it. But it's something that you should never wear. If you wear that novelty tie, you are going to do irreparable damage to your reputation as an intentionally well-dressed man. Accept it as a gift, put it on the ward in the wardrobe, and forget about it. Now, the other types of ties that you need to kind of be very careful of is polyester and man-made materials. Now the very best ties are going to be made of natural materials. Silk, of course, we all know, probably the best of all. Then you're going to have woolens, you're going to have various blends. Um, madder, ancient madder is another type of silk which was very popular in ties, a little bit expensive, but these are the best. Polyesters and man-made fibres are inexpensive. And when you're embarking upon your tie owning journey, there is a temptation to try and buy as many as you can. Because what you want is to have a collection where you have choice. Because you think, okay, if I've got 10 ties, I've got 10 different selections I can make, 10 different looks for my suit. Makes sense. But let me tell you, it is far better to buy one good quality silk tie than 10 polyester ties because people will notice they will be able to tell the tie won't last very long it won't look very good and it's going to damage that reputation so stick to the best fibers that you can natural fibers and they will steer you right okay now while it's very sensible to avoid novelty ties and man-made fibers the other thing which will have a significant impact in the way that your tie appears when you wear it is the knot in which you tie that tie. And for me, 
Every intentionally well-dressed man needs to have at least two tie knots in his repertoire for his neckties. And they're gonna steer you pretty well as you go through life wearing a tie. Now the first knot that you absolutely have to master is the four in hand. It's really easy, it's easier than tying your shoelaces, and it's gonna be quite useful for you because it's quite good for quite thick materials. So if you're wearing a knitted tie or a woven tie, for instance, the four in hand is the perfect knot because it doesn't take up a great deal of that material in the creation of the knot. The other thing about the four in hand, it is a non-symmetrical knot at the collar. So people who like a little bit of sprezzatura, they tend to favor the four in hand. Definitely worth learning. The other toy knot, which invariably I usually wear when we meet, because I tend to wear silk ties most of the time, is the Half Windsor. Now the Half Windsor provides a symmetrical triangular shaped knot. It's a little bit more traditional, a little bit more conservative. From, to my mind, it's the smartest. A little bit more difficult to learn than the four in hand, but once you've mastered it, this is maybe the only tie knot that you'll ever need to know. And if you wanna really do your homework, you can go the full Windsor, which is better for creating very large tie knots. So if you've got, say for instance, a, a shirt which has got quite a splayed collar and you have a, a quite expanse at the neck where you want to fill it with a tie knot, the Windsor is the ideal knot for that because it creates quite a large symmetrical triangular tie knot for you. So well worth getting your head around the knots and how they impact the wearing of the ties that you're going to select. Now let's talk about the length and the width of your tie and how it should appear when you wear it. Now the length of your tie is pretty straightforward. The tie should typically, the blade of the tie, this is what we call the bit at the front, the pointy bit, the front blade should end around about the belt buckle. It shouldn't go any further than that. It shouldn't be covering your crotch or beyond the, the belt line. If it does, it looks like you've not tied your tie there properly. If you have your tie halfway up your chest, it looks like you're a school kid and you're trying to make a fashion statement. So be careful about your tie knots. If you've got a particularly long tie and it doesn't fit you well, make sure you get the front blade to fit and just feed in that rearmost blade of the tie into your shirt so it's not visible and hanging down. It doesn't matter if the back blade is a little bit longer than the front. If it's just, you know, a few centimeters or so, don't be too anal about it. Remember the tie is your little opportunity to have a, a minor bit of sprezzatura, but make sure it's not too long or too short. Short. And when it comes to the width, now again, this is something which is essentially down to personal preference, but ultimately, it should also be influenced by your personal proportions. Because if you're a very lean gentleman, you can definitely get away with what we would call a skinny tie, like this one I'm holding here. Skinny tie, hanging down the front of your shirt, if you're very lean, it's not gonna be out of proportion. However, if you're a very large gentleman of, of significant proportion, and you're wearing that skinny tie, it's going to make you look out of proportion with the items that you're wearing. It's gonna make you look even bigger. The tie is going to look like a miniature because you know it's, there's this big gap all around it where your shirt is visible. In those instances, you'd want to have a much wider tie knot. Look at the difference between these two ties and the amount of room that they take up. The wide tie and the skinny tie. It would have a significant impact on the proportions of your, your style and your person if you were to wear the wrong one. So if you're a really skinny little guy, don't wear a big wide kipper tie. It's gonna look silly. And if you're a very large gentleman, don't wear a skinny tie either. Typically, most ties these days are between two and three quarter and three inches in width. And that would be a sort of typical men's tie as I'm wearing today. And the majority of ties in my collection are around about three inches or so. Okay, let's talk about those ties now, those four ties that I absolutely think you should have in your collection. And the first one's the obvious one. It is the solid single color. That means your tie is made of just one color. 
not any patterns or stripes or anything like that, just a simple solid colour tie. And these are going to be your formal ties for business situations where you want to look smart and presentable and just look conservative and traditional. And that's where your solid colour tie is going to come in its own. I would suggest that you know if you're typically somebody who wears your sort of business colours, maybe charcoal grey or navy with a suit, maybe a blazer as I'm wearing now, the ideal colours are going to have a little bit of contrast, but they're not going to argue with anything you wear. So this particular one is a burgundy or so. Uh, burgundy goes very well with your blues, your greys. It's a very, very flexible and versatile colour, as is your blues. So if you've got a mid blue or a darker blue tie, it's going to be very widely wearable with pretty much everything. Whether you've got a white shirt on, a pink shirt, a light blue shirt like I'm wearing now, as you can see, the tie I'm wearing right now is predominantly burgundy in color and it goes very nicely with my gray blazer and light blue shirt. Equally, I could choose any number of other colors, but the solid color definitely is what you want because it doesn't distract and it's for your most formal situations. Now the next tie I would suggest is a woven tie or a knitted tie because these bring some texture and an element of three dimensions to the tie because they're normally much more bulky. They're normally knitted in silk or grenadine or something of that nature and they are quite chunky normally. You normally need to wear these in a four in hand knot and again choose colours which are conservative I would suggest. Burgundy, I like burgundy ties because they tend to be the most flexible but in this case little white dots on them, very very attractive. Uh, they tend to have that sort of uh, blunt end to them and because of that and because of the 3D texture of these ties I would suggest these are far more usable in less formal situations. I wouldn't be wearing this to uh, you know a court appearance or a big presentation in a corporate business office. This would be something I would typically wear perhaps in a more Sort of business casual formally situation rather than your most formal because that 3D element again it reflects a bit more of your personality and again you know it's just another string to your bow. Now there's one tie which used to be a lot more popular in the 70s, 80s and 90s. They're still very popular today and that is the striped tie or the club tie or the rep tie. There's all sorts of names for these fellas but they've got stripes on them. And I find the striped tie I tend to wear them quite often because they allow you to inject several colours into a tie whilst still remaining an element of business-like integrity I think. Now the, stri the striped tie's history, of course, is mired within the military. Uh, many regiments, often called the regimental tie, actually have a tie and the colours of those ties pertain to the colours of those regiments or the sporting clubs, rugby clubs, hockey clubs, football clubs. All organisations of one kind or another will often have a tie uh, as their sort of motif so that everybody who's part of that group can identify themselves by seeing that tie. It becomes that affiliation with that body. So you need to be a little careful because if you're buying a tie like this in a second hand shop or a, or a thrift shop and you have no idea but it might be related to a military entity. So if you wear it you might have the embarrassment of people coming up to you and uh, asking when did you serve or where did you serve. But just be careful around that. But the majority of striped ties have nothing to do with any military or anything like that. They simply are good ways of injecting several different colours into your tie while still maintaining quite a business-like appearance. So very attractive just be a little bit careful. This particular one is my old uh, military body. It's the Royal Air Force. And fortunate for me, it's got some very good colours in it because it's got navy blue, light blue and burgundy, of course. So it makes it very, very wearable. And I do tend to wear this tie quite frequently. So, you know, just be careful if you're going to wear that striped tie. Choose your colours so that they don't, uh, you know, argue with the other clothing that you're wearing. And be a little careful that you're not wearing, you know, the uh, regimental tie of the special forces because you might end up offending somebody. But a striped tie, definitely one for every intentionally well-dressed man's wardrobe. And finally, my fourth pick for the tie you just have to own is the patterned tie. 
Now, there are a million and one different tie patterns, and here's one. This is a tie which I bought when I was living in Belgium, I think, many, many years ago. You can see what sort of a younger life I used to live. Now, this is a pattern tie. Of course it is. But it's not the tie that I'm going to recommend. The pattern tie which I'm going to recommend is going to be a tie which typically has is symmetrical in nature. So one side looks the same as the other, unlike my sort of 1960s tie-dye tie. And I would suggest that these symmetrical patterns are quite small and they are recurring so that there is an element of conformity to the tie whilst still giving the opportunity to introduce colors and motifs into the tie that you're wearing. It's a lot more interesting on the eye than say a, uh, a solid colored tie as we saw as my number one selection. And for that reason, you often find me wearing these recurring motif, small geometric pattern ties, because they're interesting. And because I advocate wearing mostly plain shirts, so your shirt will be white, it'll be blue, it'll be pink, you need a little bit of interest. And the tie gives you the opportunity to inject that into your outfit. Whereas, if I was wearing a shirt with any form of pattern on it, the obvious counterbalance to that would be to wear a tie which is solid in colour. So think about the overall ensemble of clothing and where you employ your pattern tie. But it is a great opportunity to bring a little bit of interest into your clothing. Now the tie has been declared as one of the most valuable items in your wardrobe to allow you to demonstrate your style and your panache to those around you. Not to wear a tie and to go out with an open collared shirt when you're wearing a jacket of some kind is to miss the opportunity to show the world that you are an intentionally well-dressed man in control and in mastery of the clothing that you wear. So, those are my choices, my four. If you don't own them already, get out there and pick them up and go out into the world and show them just how your style is important to you. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, give it a thumbs up. Click the subscribe if you'd like to see more. If you'd like to contribute to the conversation, don't forget, drop it into the comment section. If you'd like to support the channel, you can buy me a coffee or even join me at my Patreon page where I I provide additional video content for my esteemed patrons whose names you will see at the end of the video and to find out how to access that it's in the show notes below so until the next time wear your tie with pride passion and panache and I will see you again very soon